colors and uh, also the map numeric system the topographic maps and the, how to represent a map so this all you have learned in the last class right so uh, today we will uh, from today we will start our hands on session uh, about how to come how to create maps how to cre uh, do the uh, uh, analysis in G using gs softwares and what are the uh, data sources available all, uh, which are uh, like which are uh, readily available data sets and also we look at how to download the satellite images from different uh, uh, sources so those all we'll see in today's class so have all uh, in the last class i asked you to download the grassgs qgs and google earth so is there any issue while downloading the software no ma'am so uh, have is everyone downloaded the software yes ma'am okay yes ma'am okay yes, ma so today we will be looking at the qgs and grassgs platform will have a brief introduction and we'll get you uh, friendly with the softwares today and in the next classes you will be uh, going into little deeper about how to analyze the maps and how to do the uh, land use maps etc so can you all screen, see my screen yes ma'am yes ma'am okay yes ma'am so this is the task we need to do by uh, the end of uh, this class so today we'll learn about how to digitize the uh, vector uh, data how, and how to of using boomer and also we'll be looking at how to digitize using google earth and also we'll see how to download uh, satellite images and vector data through osm and also how uh, we can perform different operations using qgs and grassgs and finally we'll try to compose a a uh, map in a proper format today so gs is uh, basically it stands for geographic information system uh, which uh, is designed to capture the data store uh, uh, manipulate or compute analyze the data and manage the data uh, which in, in, uh, includes the geographical data which is a combination of spatial data and the uh, uh, non spatial data as well so he, uh, gs is mainly used Uh, by uh, used for doing uh, anal uh, analysis with spatial data, and we can also edit the data in the maps, and we can also uh, create uh, interactive queries about the information available through the maps. And this is uh, mainly used for uh, this is an important tool for visualizing the data in spatial environment, and also to, it is very helpful for the planners to to make decisions. and also solve the issue, uh, real time issues and the gs is commonest it, it requires a hardware which supports the software a gs software and also we need a data to work on and find uh, and also there are various methods which you can use to analyze this data and finally we are the one who will make the decisions with the analysis whatever we get the various applications where gs will be a tools are uh, used so we can use in uh, urban uh, planning we can use in transportation modeling we can use in disaster modeling and we can use in others like for agriculture purpose also we use it the various applications but uh, let us see how it works uh, so in uh, gs works by integrating the spatial information that is uh, that is the location data which is represented in the form of coordinate system where in last class you have learned about uh, different types of coordinate system right so uh, basically for analysis we'll be using the utm uh, zone so the, that is a projected coordinate system we'll be using so that will be coupled with the quantitative or qualitative data that is the attributes data which is not uh, which can uh, uh, which is not spatial data so this will be linked So these are coupled to form an output which is in the form of maps so this is how the gs works so spatial data it can be a, a, a excel file with coordinates it can be the maps it can be the geotag images or it can be the postal codes so the spatial data refers uh, something which is uh, which has the location details and attribute data is something uh, that uh, talks about that particular place so it can be like either population 
or the area of the data or the topographic characteristics of the data, vegetation, soil characteristics, or any uh, other data like the schools, health rec school records, health records, or the census data, and also the uh, road roads data uh, like the type of roads, etc. This kind of data is represented in the form of attributes. So in spatial data, we have two types of data which will be working in GIS. So that is one is vector data and other one is raster data. So vector data, it, it is represented either in the form of points or lines or areas. So, so points represent a uh, place with lat and longitude details. So and the lines, when you join these points, we form a line. And when the, if, if you make the uh, closed line, then it is represent the form of polygon and raster data is a form of uh, is a format of image which has a uh, uh, pixels data which is uh, 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 which represents a digital number of each pixel so this is how raster data looks so it is created by a grid uh, where each uh, pixel will be having some digital number to represent that part, uh, particular information within that pixel so these are the different data acquisition methods of uh, spatial data. Uh, like we can uh, acquire the spatial data either through ground based, like using the in situ sensors or the through surveys, and also through using G, uh, GPS. So the, uh, this is the ground based acquisition methods. And image based acquisition is uh, through sensors or the satellite images or the scanners, etc. So the like uh, what uh, landsat images aerial photographs, these are all part of image-based acquisition. So this, uh, from 2010, uh, the government agencies have opened up sharing the uh, spatial data uh, to the public through various sources. So these are few sources which we'll be looking today. So before lo uh, looking at the uh, spatial, uh, before looking at any uh, data set, available from various sources so this is the one which is very common uh, uh, which is a common thing which we need to look at uh, in any of the source so the metadata metadata it stores the uh, uh, information about how the data set is created what is this data set for and how, uh, uh, how, uh, what type of coordinate system is available in this data set uh, what uh, what type of coordinate system is used for data set and when was it created? So it talks about all the information, how about the data set. So it records the, uh, it has uh, who has created the data and where was it created, and also what are the constraints they uh, uh, they have while preparing the data, and what else, uh, and what is the quality of the data, etc. So this is how a metadata information looks like the basic details which we need to look while taking any data from any source. So we need to see what type of coordinate system it has and also what is the size of the pixel. If you are taking a raster data, you have to look at what is the pixel size which talks about the spatial resolution. So what is the spatial resolution and also uh, if you are taking uh, the uh, satellite images, you have to look at the spectral resolution and also you have to look at, at the cloud cover. So these all details will be available in the metadata. First, uh, source, uh, so is it clear till now? Have, uh, have every, has everyone understood about the metadata? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. So now we'll uh, go forward to look at uh, how to access the data through various sources. The uh, first one is Survey of India. So in the last class, uh, Aishwarya ma'am has explained about the topo, uh, topo sheets, right? So these topo sheets are available in Survey of India. So I'll, so I'll just uh, uh, give a brief introduction how to access the uh, website and how can you download the topo sheets used in Survey of India. Survey of India is uh, 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 one of the uh, big, uh, larger, uh, good initiative of uh, uh, of NRSC uh, to, pro uh, uh, to provide the data to the public. So for the link, uh, here is the link which you can access for, uh, for Survey of India. So, 
let us uh, just uh, go to the link how it looks so this is a survey of india portal so here you, you can uh, sign in here and here you can see various data sets which are available in survey of india uh, but the survey of india you cannot download all the data sets for free you have to purchase the data set uh, the other data sets this is the only data set which is available for free which consists of this topo sheets so let us go through this so if you want any data set you can either enter the sheet number if you are aware of how to uh, which sheet you need or else you can also search the sheet number by state and city whichever you want so let us see so i am looking at the vishakhapatnam topo sheet so here are the tiles which are uh, sheets which are available so i can say uh, So once if I uh, enter the sheet number, you can start downloading it. So it will ask for login details. You can just log in and you can uh, also parallel. You can also access through your, in your system if possible. You can just explore it. So it is downloaded in PDF format. So you can. Okay, I think there is no data in that particular sheet. Let me do so. already one, downloaded one data set i'll just uh, show you the data set which was downloaded before so this is a data set uh, which i have downloaded from survey of india so this is how a topo sheet looks like so you have all the legend here what represents what, etc. And this is the map number of the sheet. So this is how you can download the uh, data from uh, Survey of India. So is it clear how to download the Survey of India uh, uh, sheets from Survey of India? Yes, ma'am. So next one, the Bhuvan. So Bhuvan is also a pla uh, Indian platform which was de uh, uh, developed by ISRO. So here also you can download uh, uh, the satellite images and also you can download the vector data as well. Uh, like and also this uh, here you can also digitize the vector data and download the data set. Like uh, it has all that boundaries. Like if you want to download, uh, if you want to generate a city boundary you can one is the one of the best option for that so this is how for the uh, 
uh, this is how the v1 looks like so for downloading satellite images you can go to this open data archive and for creating a vector data sets and all you can go for v1 2d So here you can see the different uh, categories, which is a satellite or sensor, a theme of products and program of projects. So in the theme of products, you have different uh, uh, about land and uh, terrain, so have different products here. And here uh, you have different uh, satellite data, which uh, so whichever you want, you can just select. So for suppose if I want Cartosat data, so I am selecting Cartosat data. So here you can find if this represent uh, the whole India is divided into number of uh, into a grid which has styles. So you can select the tiles where uh, which refer, uh, represents your location. Also you can enter the uh, topo sheet number. Or you can just uh, interactively you can just uh, sel uh, select the tiles. So for suppose if I want some place somewhere data of this file, so I can just select and then stop and then go to the next. So here you can see this is all uh, data available uh, for this particular tiles. So you can download whichever data you want. Just select it. You can also view the data set. How it looks like, and then you can start. Uh, you can see the metadata here. So, see here it, it has the name of the data set, and what is the theme, and what is the type of the data. So, uh, do you all know what is DEM? DEM is a digital elevation model, uh, which represents as a, which is in the form of a raster image, which has the elevation details, which uh, takes that. Uh, stores the elevation data in that particular image. So this DEM we mainly use for doing the slope analysis to get the contours, to know the drainage network. So we use DEM for these purposes. So here you can see which is a satellite uh, to they have and what is the type of sensor and also the what is the type of file available and what is it has the spatial resolution and also the what radiometric resolution also, also available. So you can just select that and you can download it. So and so it is asking for login, right? So here is the login option. You can just log into the data, log into the portal. So you can just uh, log in. You can create an account and just log in, and it will be downloaded. So this is how the satellite images can be downloaded from Google and also let us see how a vector map can be created or vector data can be generated through Google. So here there is, it has tools, updates, Google store. So these are the options available. So here is the draw tool. So just click on this draw tool. So here it will ask which, it will show different number of options, whether you want to draw a line or whether you want to take a, uh, you want a point, can just select whatever you want. I am selecting a polygon here. So you can just zoom in. So while you zoom in, it will give the boundary. So like suppose if you see in uh, like this, you can understand what is the boundary of each state, right? So when you go, when you scroll inside, when you go zoom in, then you will find the boundaries of the cities as well. So suppose if I want to see Vishakhapatnam, So I want to, if I want the boundary of this Vizag urban area, so I can just select the polygon tool, start clicking. So you can see a polygon is being created. So you can just trace the boundary which is available here.
so when you want to close this polygon just give a right click so here the feature is created so you can start downloading yeah. and if you want to create any attributes you can just give the, create the attributes here so i can just download so it is done and if you want to edit this polygon this is the edit uh, tool to modify this polygon so it will show the number of the nodes so if you want to edit you can just edit using this tool. so this is how you can create uh, vector data using Ruben and you can also access other types of uh, data uh, like let us go to urban so here you can see different uh, uh, land use maps you can access and when you go to this web services so here is a, a wms or wmts layer so the, these are the urls uh, which will be used in uh, to work on this maps uh, in qgs so you can access these maps directly in qgs using this particular layers so this i'll explain i uh, will uh, explore it uh, later when i talk about qgs i'll show how to do that and here you can see the metadata so you can see the coordinate system here. So this is how we can look at one data. And also you can explore other applications as well. There are the, it has the data related to agriculture, etc. And And it all, uh, uh, when you go to the schematic services, it, uh, you can also do the, uh, pro, uh, a kind of uh, pre preliminary analysis like what is the percentage of urban area, what is the percentage of uh, so what is the percentage of urban area, what is the percentage of agriculture, what is the percentage of forest. So this kind of preliminary analysis you can do using one it online itself. So is it clear about one? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now let us go to the other data source. So next one is the OpenStreetMaps. OpenStreetMaps is also, uh, is a public platform where you can also contribute uh, uh, in providing the data and where you can get the data. Uh, and the data which is available in OpenStreetMaps is uh, mostly of the vector data. So you can get the uh, building data, road data, etc. using this OpenStreetMaps. Click on this OpenStreet link. So it takes to uh, the uh, OpenStreetMap portal. So here you can just uh, sign up or, or log in if you have an account. So you can search for some place. So if I want to download data set for Vishak Patna. So to download the data set, go to this export option and select the area, how much ever area you want to, ex uh, for how much extent you want to download the data. So you can just use this manually select it. So it will, a rectangle will be created. So just resize this. rectangle just give the extent uh, of data you want to download and just click on this export option okay Is my screen visible? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so he, here the file is downloaded in OSM format. So this OSM format you can directly open in QGIS and then you can export into the file uh, formats whatever you want to use. So this is about OpenStreetMaps. The next one uh, we'll uh, look in, uh, into this Earth Explorer, which is by USGS, United States Geological Survey. So here, this uh, from this website, you can uh, down, uh, download the satellite images from various satellites like Landsat images, Sentinel data, etc. This can be downloaded and also DEM models can also be downloaded using Earth Explorer. So to access this, So this is how the Earth Explorer looks like. So here you can uh, either search for the place. You can either, okay, first you need to log in before uh, downloading the data set. You can just log in. So once after you log in, you can either search for a particular place. Either you can search like this, or also you can upload your uh, custom shape file, which if you have, in either in KML format or shape file format. And then you can uh, also. Uh, or else you can also uh, select by using this predefined polygon or circle. And then you can also give the uh, uh, time, like from uh, when you want this data, like you can give a range and you can also give the cloud cover other options. So you can just give whatever inputs you want to give. And then you can see there are various data sets here. Like, so here is the Landsat. You can download the Landsat data using this. And here is the Sentinel data. You can download the Sentinel data. And for DEM, you can go through, go to this. So here you can download the SRTM data as well for DEM images. So this is how. So you can. Uh, explore how the data sets can be downloaded. For suppose if I want to give shape file just so while giving the shape file so uh, already I uh, I have uploaded this data set in uh, teams files so you can access this data set in teams files. So you can just when you're giving the shape file in this earth explorer you have to give it in zip format. So these are all uh, see, this is a shape file and these are all supporting files which talks about projection and the uh, attributes data etc so if uh, when whenever you oh, whenever you are uh, uh, asked to give a shape file you have to give set of these files not just the shape file so uh, so while uploading you have to upload it in zip format so so this is the area 
So I have given the shape file. And if I want data from So I am selecting the Landsat data here. Then after selecting the land, uh, set, uh, data set which you wanted to select, click on results. So you can see various data sets available for in that particular time period for that particular place. So here you can see uh, this is the footprint like it shows uh, what amount of area is available for in this image and this is the image how the image looks so you can see there is it overlays the image and so when you click on this you, this talk uh, this talks about uh, and for download uh, you can see here there is an option for download so click on this and here it will give number of options to download so you can just download the whole bundle. If you are downloading for a land use classification, you have to download the whole bundle. And okay, the, so the, that is how you should download the land set. And here you can see there are different collections of Landsat. And uh, so here you can see Landsat 8 to 9. It is available uh, from uh, 2030, I guess. And Landsat 4 to 5. So it is available from uh, 2001, 2001, I guess. So before downloading the data sets, you should have a, a brief information about the what type of uh, uh, what sa uh, satellite it is and what is the uh, resolution, sp sp spatial resolution, spectral resolution data. You need to have a basic idea of this. Okay, one more thing I forgot. Like uh, so, to access the metadata for uh, the particular data sets. So here is the metadata option. So here you can see the data about this image. So here you can find the land cloud cover and the coordinate system. So this is how the metadata looks for satellite images. So is it okay? Are there any doubts till now? Are there any doubts? If you have any doubts, you can just ask me. Ma'am, can you just uh, help me to like how we exported the shape file? Export I'm, trying to, I'm trying to follow up with uh, for the Earth Explorer downloading data. No, through Explorer, you cannot uh, download the vector data. It is uh, only for satellite data. It is, you can download it in raster format. This Earth Explorer is basically only to download the satellite images and the raster data, not for vector data. But when you want to uh, download, like if you want particular uh, data for particular study area, you can just import the shapefile into that Earth Explorer. Yes, ma'am. So shall I move on to the next, next portal? So this is Earth data, uh, which is uh, given by NASA. Uh, so even NASA has large amount of spatial data sets, uh, which are uh, which are uh, analyzed with the socioeconomic data sets as well, which are coupled with the socioeconomic data sets. Uh, and also you can visualize the real time data uh, through uh, which are uh, being sent to satellites. So to access this website, you can, uh, here is the link. You can follow this link.
so this is the link which will uh, take you to the portal and to access the data sets to download the data sets you can just directly click on this link so see here you you have many data sets for that uh, for worldwide so if you want some data sets which will be available for india just So here you can see the uh, data set uh, LULC available for different time periods. So these are uh, readily available data sets. But however, like whatever the down, uh, data sets you download, uh, you should always verify with the, uh, you should uh, verify how accurate they are. So just don't use the data uh, which is downloaded, uh, which is readily available and download from some data source and you should before using it just verify whether how accurate it is and whether this data is reliable for your study so you should also look at these factors when using any data from data source so this is about earth data and the next one uh, uh, is google earth so Google Earth is uh, uh, it is available as an online platform and also it is available for desktop versions as well. So here uh, in using Google Earth, uh, in Google Earth you can access uh, a lot of uh, like uh, the administrative areas. You can also uh, create vector data and you can also download the vector data. Also you can uh, 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 download the raster files as well. Uh, by clipping the uh, images uh, for a particular area and you can use it but when while, while do downloading you have to download in TIFF format which uh, so when you download a particular raster in TIFF format it has the uh, coordinate details if you download the uh, images in JPEG format that coordinate details will be missing so when you want to uh, use it in QGIS you have uh, to Take data which has the coordinate details. So let us see how uh, the Google Earth web platform looks like. So to see the online platform of Google Earth, you can just click on this launch Earth. And for downloading the desktop version, you can download from it here so here you can you can see there are different options so first if you want to create some new file or new project you can just click on this project so you can it will ask for create a project If you want, you can directly access these files in your drive itself. So here it will ask for add placement, which uh, which is a point, and you can also draw a line or polygon. And within this uh, project, if you want to add any folder, you can add the folder. And if you want to overlay any image, you can also use this option. So let us do, let us add a point. And here, in, uh, here you can see there is a uh, scale, like when you scroll, uh, zoom inside, it, the, uh, you can see the scale is changing. So it talks about at what scale you are looking at this, uh, this map is available or uh, you can access this map at this scale so it talks about that it also talk, it talks about the coordinates lat and longitude details and this here it, it talks about elevation and it talks about what type of uh, satellite data you are view, accessing and these are the tools point tool and the uh, line or polygon tool 
So let us open Sharp Apple data set. So I can add some point like I can add point like this. So here you can give the title of the point and the symbology symbols and these are the settings. So if you want to create any description about this particular point, you can also create that. So once after you create, you just go back. So the point one is created here. So if you want to export this particular file, you can just go to this ex export as KML file. So it will be downloaded. So it is downloaded as So this is how you can uh, use online and let us see about uh, the offline version. Uh, I mean uh, the desktop version, not offline, but it's desktop version. So everyone, please open the Google map. Let us uh, create some uh, uh, some vector data in Google Earth now. So this is how the desktop version looks like. So here you have many options um, in menu. Uh, you can uh, open any file which is in KML or KMZ format. Or if you want to open, you can also open the shape file. You can also open the raster tip format. You can also open JPEG formats as well. And you can also open the image formats, etc. So you can open any file from here. And you can also save. And if you uh, 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 want to uh, save, uh, uh, take a snapshot, you can also, save. there's an option called save image. And, and if you want to access the whatever the files you, are, uh, you have created, if you want to access in Google Maps, you can also view in Google Maps. And here you can see the, uh, which are uh, if you want, you can, if you want to use a grid, you can also see the grid. And here there are different tools. So here there is uh, options like if you want to change any settings like coordinate system, if you want to change, you can use this. So here you can change the coordinate system as well. And if you want to change the uh, units of measurement, you can also change the units. And there is another option called add, where you can add folder, point, line, polygon. And if you want to do is something, if you want to uh, uh, make any uh, video tour of uh, some particular area, you can also do that. So these options are uh, also available here. See here, uh, these are the tools, uh, draw tools, point, polygon, line, image and this is for creating a video and also google earth uh, desktop version has the uh, option to view the historical maps uh, like you can see uh, there is a timeline which is available you can see the maps from 19 it depends upon area uh, which area you are seeing and this is a north arrow uh, direction so when you just click on this, it will show which is the north direction. And let us see, let us this So now the it is in the uh, it is like a globe, right? So if you want to make it as a projected map, just uh, you need to press R for this. 
so it will turn into a projected map. The map is not clear because so see here you can see map is blurred so that means there is no data available at this particular time period for this so here there is a map available at 1994 and then 1995 1996 so 2011 so you, you can access a satellite image in different timeline and this is about uh, sunlight So these are different other options and this is an option to view uh, or to go to the online platform directly. Okay, so now let us start creating a uh, data set. So go to this my places, you can add a folder. Let us you can add polygon or points so i will try uh, make a data set of uh, beach for uh, view points or the tourist spots So when you open, uh, uh, when you click on this add path uh, place mark, so it shows the point. So to place place this point on uh, on uh, one particular tourist spot, just move this uh, place mark symbol. So and place it wherever you want to place, and then give a name. Let us say it is lighthouse, right? So let us. So, so this is the project one we have created the folder and this is the point we have created so you can access it here and here is a layers panel where you uh, uh, you can see different uh, uh, where you can access uh, different layers which are readily available so you can see it has marked all the poly uh, polygons of parks and recreation areas like green spaces etc and here you can also see the 3d buildings of major landmarks uh, which are uh, mapped in on google earth already um, let us see Let us see one 3D building, how it looks like. So this is, uh, so for this building, the 3D view is available. And also you can see the roads so this yellow on our highways and also you can see different uh, places like hospitals hotels etc so this is how you can create a data set in using google earth so any doubts in google earth Are there any doubts in Google Earth? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, where do we see the metadata in Google Earth? Can we see the metadata? Uh, yes, you can.
No, uh, see, uh, uh, like uh, we are not downloading any data set from here, right? We are just taking the data set, from, uh, we are creating a data set here. So while uh, the metadata you can see here, it has elevation details, it has the coordinate system. So the uh, So these are the things you can find out. Is it okay? Yes, sir. And if you uh, and uh, you can uh, also find uh, go to the help to see the shortcuts of uh, this particular tools. Like you can uh, use the shortcuts directly. So you can keep on exploring. It has um, many other uh, uh, features. You can explore that based on your work requirements. OK, so this is about Google Earth. There is one more uh, platform called Google Earth Engine, which was uh, introduced uh, recently, uh, which is an uh, online uh, analysis, uh, online computing platform where you can do different type of spatial analysis uh, using uh, it runs uh, to do that analysis. It, uh, it runs on a code. So you have uh, uh, to click on this to do any analysis. Just open this code book. So you can do any type of analysis using this code editor and there are uh, many uh, readily available data sets on earth engine as well so you can access those data sets so this is how a code editor looks so here you can write the script and you can view the map uh, parallelly and there are uh, also google earth engine it provides uh, uh, a learning platform where uh, you will be taught how to write the scripts and also it provides readily available scripts as well for any type of analysis uh, for basic things for basic analysis and also uh, there is a, a explorer uh, which is a, a web interface which is a, a sim, uh, where you can view the data sets online directly on uh, google Earth engine so you can view many number of data sets, satellite data sets as well. And also you can do some kind of analysis in this web platform itself. So to access uh, that, you can click on this link. So here you can see there is a data panel where you can add and remove the data and this is a workspace. So if you want to do the data catalog, uh, you can see what type of data is available. So you can view different data sets here. So uh, these are uh, 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 various source of data where you can download and there are other sources you can just uh, explore based on your requirements when you are doing some project. So you can and also uh, uh, Data can be uh, act, uh, digitized using the uh, surveys data like aerial, uh, also from the aerial photographs. And uh, also from GPS data, you can digitize the data. So these are, uh, these are other sources which are ground based. So this is all about uh, various data sources and how you can download the different types of data from different sources. So are there any doubts in this? If you have any doubts till now, you can just ask me. Let us take five minutes break after this and let us start with QGIS software. Is everything clear?
Are there any doubts? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay, then let us take five minutes break and we'll start with the QJS. How to uh, in Q, uh, so in the uh, next session we'll see how to access this data in QJS and how we can work on this data. How to uh, in this class we'll just give a brief introduction about the software and next class you will be doing how to do an analysis in QJS. Okay, let us take five minutes break. So we will join by three ten. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes.